and welcome to Carlene's Kitchen and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a sauce full of mushrooms. I'm going to be taking the recipe from this cookbook. It's going to take me about five to seven minutes but I'll kind of be doing it at a start and stop process. The first thing you do is get your pan out and you're going to fry your onions. I have here, and I don't mean to have my back towards you, or my shoulder, but I'm kind of hoping just to really focus in on the food. So it's very, very hot because I got started kind of slow. So I'm going to keep it off the heat. But I'm going to saute these onions for just a little bit. I'm using cast iron so that it leaches. It leaches iron. And this is butter and a little bit of olive oil. The next thing I'm going to do is add some garlic. You know the routine. You can add as much garlic as you want. This is what I use when I don't feel like cutting it. You know this organic stuff. You can put quite a bit of garlic in. I'll have, the, I'll have the exact measurements below. So now I've got my onion sauteing and some garlic. And I'll go over here, and hopefully you can just see my hands. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a few more mushrooms. This is the brown mushroom, and I'm gonna, I have already cut most of them. I actually think the brown mushroom has more flavor than the white one, but this is going to be a combination of the brown and the white, and one more. You've heard me talk about mushrooms before. Well, this is gonna be a cream of mushroom soup that is not, it's kind of thick, that I'm gonna be adding to my broccoli chicken casserole later on today. But I just wanted to, I wanted to separate and just demonstrate how I make the mushroom sauce. I'm just gonna hold off here with that. And so you can see over here, if you wanna come in closer, I'm just kind of making it, mmm. Now I can smell the two flavors. I am going to add some of my just hold a sec, I'll be right there. Just wanna wipe that down. I'm gonna be adding, adding potassium salt to give it some flavor. I've talked about this before. Yes, I have mineral salts, and they have minerals in them, but they also have that sodium, so I'm using less and less of this. Back to my fry pan, and we are just about ready to add our mushrooms. So we're gonna add quite a few brown. It's kind of funny that I didn't take two of them, huh? And quite a few white. And we're just gonna let these cook down. You see how fast that goes. But while that is cooking down, I have one more thing I wanna demonstrate and talk about. And that is going to be right here. It's called dried porcini mushrooms. You can get them in the meat section. You sometimes have to ask for it. Sometimes they have it hanging on the shelf, but they're dry and you have to rehydrate them. So I put them into a cup about 15 minutes ago and then I microwaved them for about 15 minutes and they sort of made a big mess <laughs> and came over the top and were just so dry and I didn't have any liquid and we just got a new microwave and it made it dirty and I was pretty bummed. But I started again, so I rehydrated them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna separate them like that. I don't know the theory, I'm just following directions. 
So then I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut them up. It's really interesting about these mushrooms. Now this particular one is, is soft. I know you know what, this is a new company. I've never used it by Melissa. The other company that the store always had would have just hard pieces in here. But these are all soft. Wow. Yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut those up. Gosh, they kind of look like pieces of liver. Look at that. Well, here's the stem. And that's how the mushroom grew. It says that these were actually raised in, um, distributed in LA, but they actually were a product of China, which doesn't, which is what it is. We'll see. But I have used these in a lot. Doesn't it kind of look like the giblets and the liver? of when you're cutting a turkey. But you take this now, and we're gonna use that. And we're gonna let these go ahead and cook down. They're really, um, I suppose, about five minutes from cooking down. But I can go ahead and I can add that in here. And this is gonna give so much more flavor let me just be brave and taste this. Mm. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. So I'm going to put this in here. And so now I'm just cooking down all of those mushrooms. I've added some potassium salt. Definitely going to add pepper. I'm not, and I'm going to add a couple more things before I break away for a second. And that is some pepper, which I don't see my pepper shaker. Here it is. So here's my pepper shaker. This is turning out beautiful. I'm really thankful. Did you know I, told, I said before, pepper is really good for you? So don't be afraid to use a lot of pepper. And see how that is breaking down, or as the, the mushrooms are melting down. And I've got that sauce in there, and you know, I can turn this up. Well, then I needed to add some thyme. Now here's the problem. I don't have any thyme. <laughs> I'm out of thyme, though I do have a lot of thyme. I am retired but I don't have any thyme spice. And so I thought, I, I noticed that this Italian, Italian seasoning had thyme in it. Now, actually, I love the taste of thyme, so let me see what this tastes like. Well, I do think it's, it's not anything bad, so I'm gonna add some thyme, and other seasonings. The recipe calls just for thyme. So here we are again in my cast iron, and it's really going down beautifully. Oh my goodness. You know, I've, I've really had thinking about investing in a bigger cast iron because of things, uh, maybe a Dutch iron cast iron, but for right now, this is what I have. So, are we ready? It says to add the liquid that was left over from the soaking dried porcini mushrooms. So I've turned it up and I'm going to put that in there. It seems a little liquidy to me, but I'm gonna follow directions. And we're gonna get this going and let this kind of get really hot. But look how it's melted down. It's pretty. And see, you could go just buy a can of cream of mushroom soup, couldn't you? But really, 
how many mushrooms are in a can of cream of mushroom soup? What do you think? Probably not very many. And as I've been told so many times, mushrooms are really good for us. And on top of that, on top of that this stuff is so delicious. I use this with green beans too, this very same mix. I've been making this for a while. And so what I'm gonna do with that now is different than what I normally do. So I feel like we're in pretty good shape there. So do I use organic flour, white flour by Red Mill Bob, Bob's Red Mill? No. I don't use this very often, but in this particular situation, because I just don't want to experiment with my substitutes, I'm going to go ahead and use two tablespoons as a thickener. One, two. It's kind of interesting that when you put flour in as a thickener, they say that the flour changes its flavor, so you're supposed to let the flour cook. Don't just add another ingredient right away. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna do? You just keep looking at that, and I'm gonna get my wash rag and just clean up because I cannot seem to pour easily. I get so frustrated with myself. Maybe I have an eye problem. Okay, so we are, maybe I have an eye hand coordination problem. But I don't think I, I was always pretty good at sports when I was a kid. Okay, so this is thickening up. I'm gonna let it thicken just a little bit more, but right now you can absolutely smell mushrooms. Yes, you're smelling mushrooms, and I put that flour in there to thicken it because two more things we're going to add. We are going to add broth, and all I have is bone broth. It's chicken bone broth. I wish I had just plain chicken stock, but I don't. So I'm going to add that and let that cook. It said one cup. I didn't measure, did I? And I'm going to turn it up. And you know what happens when you turn up cast iron? Don't leave. Don't answer your cell phone. Don't check your text. Because it gets hot. And see, you know, now I just spilled. And maybe it's because I'm using this thing. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to get this boiling, and you can see it thickening. And then it says two cups of heavy cream, which I'm not going to add. I consider this a holiday meal. They say Jesus rose from the dead on a Sunday, and we represent that real soon in a couple weeks. And so I consider this like a... Sunday special meal. I don't make it that often. So this, I am going to use some heavy cream. You could use coconut cream. I have never ever made a recipe with one cup of heavy cream, but this one calls for two and there's no way am I putting two in here. But now I have, I, that was too much. So I'm going to have to let this simmer. I'm going to have to let this soak down. I could actually use, I could have used three-fourths of a cup. Well, that's good news. So I'm going to take a taste of this. And I'm going to let it thicken. And we're, I'm going to clean up and let it boil down for a little bit. Mmm, it's really good. What's really good is the mushrooms. I added too much cream. Yay, you do not need to add all that cream. You don't need all that fat. You need half of what I did. So why don't we just take a break, and I'm going to let this thicken, and as soon as it's thickened up, I'll end my, my production. 
Okay, the cream of mushroom soup is done. It is absolutely perfect. Look at that. You want it to be thick like this because we're going to be using it on top of chicken and broccoli and make a casserole. But let me take it off the burner and let me taste it. Okay, this is homemade cream of mushroom soup using three different types of mushrooms and pretty good ingredients. And so th this is um, a goodbye and uh, thanks for watching and I pray that our food is blessed.